Understanding Type 1 and Type 2 Errors The worlds of statistics and research are full of decision-making, and like all decisions, they're never without the risk of error. You've got your Type 1 error and your Type 2 error, two missteps that statisticians are always trying to sidestep, or at least minimize. Hash 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 Type 1 Error The False Alarm Imagine you're testing a new drug that's supposed to kick the common cold to the curb. A Type Y error would be like you throwing a party because you think the drug works, but in reality, it's no better than a candy-coated placebo. In statistical terms, this is rejecting a true null hypothesis, also known as a false positive. It's when you assume there's an effect or a relationship in your data when there isn't one. The alarm bells are ringing, but there's no fire. In the scientific community, Type 1 errors are considered more severe because they can lead to the belief that something is true when it's not, potentially leading to further research, funding, and policy decisions based on false assumptions. Hash 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 type 2 error, the missed catch. Now imagine the opposite. The drug does work, but your test fails to show it. That's a type 2 error, the so-called false negative. This is when you mistakenly believe there's no effect or relationship when there actually is one. Type 2 errors mean a missed opportunity, a discovery that could have been groundbreaking, gathering dust in the corner of the no significant result bin. Hash 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 the balancing act. Which is more important? That's like asking if it's better to lose a winning lottery ticket or to mistakenly think you've won only to face disappointment. Both are important, but in different contexts. Type 1 errors challenge the foundation of trust in scientific findings, while type 2 errors can slow progress allowing effective treatments to slip through scientists' hands. In practical applications, the relative importance depends heavily on the stakes at hand. If you're dealing with life-or-death situations, like new medical treatments or safety protocols, you'll probably want to prioritize minimizing type 1 errors. No one wants to depend on a treatment that's all hype and no substance. However, if you're in a field where the cost of missing out on a true effect is extremely high, you might focus on avoiding type 2 errors. For example, in environmental conservation, not detecting the true impact of a contaminant could lead to ecological disasters. Hash 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 the art of trade-off. There's a trade-off between these two errors. The more you try to avoid one, the more likely you're going to bump into the other. Statisticians use significance levels, like the famous p-value, to balance this tug of war. It's a game of thresholds and probabilities, and finding the right balance is where the real skill lies. In my Portland life, I see this balance akin to choosing the right path on a misty Oregon trail. You want to avoid the illusion of danger as much as missing out on a scenic vista hidden just off your route. The trick lies in walking with enough caution, but also enough curiosity to discover. Everyone wants the truth, no more, no less. And whether that truth is about a medical treatment, an environmental concern, or just the effectiveness of my new waterproof boots, Portland rains don't mess around. Understanding and managing these errors is crucial. If stats and decisions were a game of darts, type 1 errors would be hitting the bullseye on the wrong target, while type 2 errors would be missing the board entirely. And while both miss the mark, understanding their differences ensures we aim better with each throw.